Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another live here on the All To New channel. Whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, hello everyone. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes so that you can pop in, say hello, and give me a little bit of information about yourself maybe. So let's just wait a little bit so that you can all pop in and we can get started with a new live here on the Alter New channel. So normally Angel is behind the Alter New badge today. She will be adding in all the um, links for today and answering any questions I might miss. So there we go. Hi, Sue. How are you? So I'm just going to wait a little bit longer and then we can get started. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been, the weather's been nice this time. Last time it was cold. So I put on my dress with my yellow belt. I made myself look a little fancy. Yes, yeah, Cece, I've got some bangs. So I've got a new a new haircut, had to change it. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Pat, good afternoon. <laughs> so welcome there, everyone. I hope you are all well today. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Today, we'll be going to be crafting with um, a really fun, beautiful flower. And I thought I'd do a little bit of watercoloring and a bit of watercoloring with a little bit of a twist. So there we go. I'm going to show you the stamp set I'm going to be using today. It's this lovely set. Oh, a little bit of a glare there. Let's pop it up like this. So it's the Blooming Tulip Stamp Set from All to New, and it comes with a coordinating die. And it's got these lovely large blooms, and they are perfect for watercoloring. And I'm going to give you some really fun techniques and tips um, if you're new to watercoloring and you're a bit... Um, afraid of doing it so these are some fun things you can do if you want to just try it out hi nancy and warmer san francisco it took such a long time for it to warm up here and everything just took off today we have got some nice weather i've got my plants pot potted it does it is a very big flower let me try and measure it let me just try and see how large the flower is it's about four inches wide and two inches high so it is a pretty large flower that's probably why i'm drawn to it because i usually make uh, scrapbook layouts or larger projects and so larger flowers mean less work for me okay so um i've also pulled out some inks so here i've got the gentleman's gray if i'm not mistaken but any gray ink would use if you want to use another color you could use another color Thank you for sharing, everyone. Oh, yeah. And you just reminded me, if you do share while this is live, we will pick a lucky winner at the end of this live session for a $15 gift voucher to the All to New store. So here I've got Gentleman's Grey. I hope this is correct. They're not a lot of greys. I know it's at the Rock Collection, so it must be the one. So it's Silver Lake, Cloudy Nights, Charcoal Suit, and Dark Nights. But I won't be using the Dark Nights just because it tends to um, go towards a blue color and I want it to stay gray. So these are going to be my gray inks. I've got a little palette here to do a bit of watercoloring on later on. And I've also pulled out some alternate brushes. So these are the, uh, this is the watercolor brush number four and number two. And I've also got my detailed watercolor brushes. I'll see if I'll use them later on. And as for my watercolor palettes, I just picked up those that, that were laying on my desk. Uh, I've got the metallic watercolors, which you can see here. It's a really lovely set. There we go. They're nice and shiny and really well loved. And then I've got the artist watercolor pen here. There we go. You can see I've been using it a lot as well. Hi, Pam. Oh, yes, Joni, it's a lovely set. So um, I'm going to pop you down and then we're going to start working on our first card. I'm going to make a gray flower. So let's see how that works out. Hi, Maureen from Hawaii. That sounds fun. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch you down. This should just work with one little click. There we go. 
So there we have our blooming tulips. I might try and zoom in a little, little bit. Let's just see if we can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this is the blooming tulip set. It's such a be beautiful set. And you've got three layers, which is really fun too. <laughs> Only two. So just to show you, if you do open up the trifle card, you will have the layering guide inside. But we're not going to do any stamping today. We're not going to do any layering. We're going to do ward coloring. So here you can see, and you've got different examples on how you can use it. So there we go. So let's just pop that to one side. I've already got my die set ready to use a little bit later on. So for our first technique and our first card, I'm just taking some watercolor paper here and I am going to use not the base layer, not the last outline. I'm going to use the more detailed inner layer over here. Thank you for sharing. So there we go. So if you, you can see it here, it's this lovely detailed layer and you can use it as such in stamping as well. So you don't have to use all of the layers. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to stamp some of the leaves as well. So I'm just going to stamp once again that more detailed image here. So I'm going to pop this onto my block. There we go. I need a second sheet of paper. So I'm going to stamp two onto, um, so two of these images onto my watercolor paper. And I'm going to use some gray. Sorry, someone is using the printer, so you might hear the printer in the background. <laughs> so when the boys are working upstairs, they send their homework downstairs, and so they're printing. Thank you for the noise. <laughs> no, the printer, Damien, the printer. The printer makes a noise. <laughs> And he, and he shrugs. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to stamp this in some gray. And so you could choose whatever gray you're going to use. I'm going to use the cloudy night. Okay. So it's not the lightest. It's not the third shade. It's the second shade. So first things first, I'm just going to prep my stamp with a little alter new eraser. There we go. Like so. And um, no need to... to it doesn't have to be perfect, the stamp. So if you prefer to use a stamping tool, you can, but I'm just going to use my acrylic block and just stamp. There we go, like so. And yes, that's a lovely stamp set as well, Sue. So I'm just going to stamp my flower onto here in that gray so that you can see it. It's really, really pretty. And I'm going to stamp it again because I do want two of these. There we go. There we go. And just look, that's just the inner stamp, but you can already see how pretty that is without doing any of the layers. I already just like the look of that in a stamp. But we're going to do some watercoloring with this. So let's pop this back on and I'm just going to add a couple of uh, leaves too. I'm not going to be using the stem this time. Oh, that's the wrong leaf. So let's just get that kind of detailed leaf again. There we go. Once again, just going to prep my stamp. And then here. I'm going to stamp this three times. Let's just go ahead and stamp this three times. One. So I'm using cloudy nights for this. You can do this with whatever color you like. It works really well. Two. 
and three. So there we go. So I've got my images stamped. Okay. And now I'm going to start watercoloring. So let's just pop this to one side again. I think I'm going to use my watercolor brush too. And I might go back in with details with the, the detailed brushes number two as well. So this at least I've got the, the number two and the round brushes and then the detailed brushes, I've got number two as well. So it's a bit smaller. There we go. So I am going to need a little bit of water. There we go. So I'm not a watercolor expert at all. So I always try to make watercoloring easier. So this is one of the ways I have found to make it a little bit easier. There we go. So there you have it. We're going to start maybe just with the, the flowers here. And I'm going to use my gray inks as watercolors here. I'm going to use the lighter shade and the darker shade. And to do this, you could use the um, you could use your stamping block as a palette. I'm just going to pull out my palette here and just pop it on my desk like so. And then I can just add my colors onto, onto here. So I'm just going to add the first color, which is Silver Lake. Hi, Carmen. Thank you for sharing. And then I'm going to go with the darker shade, which is called Charcoal Suit, and just pop it on there. So if you don't have any watercolors uh, at home, this is a great way of trying out watercoloring. If you've got inks, you can use these. Huh? So our crisp inks are really good for watercoloring too. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bit of water to my floral images. And I just want to add a bit of color, a bit of texture, and make it look less stamped. So I want to get more of a watercolor look. Okay. So I'm just going to add a bit of water over here. And this will reactivate the color I've already put on there. And I can go and pick up a darker shade and kind of just kind of flick that through just to kind of create that kind of watercolor look. So you're kind of you're going to blend out some of the color which you've already got on here. And you can just add some of that darker shade as well, just to I'm just going to add color and it's these grays have a kind of a blue tint in them so when you start working with the watercolors on there you might see that kind of pop through when you're adding your color so um, that can happen a little bit so I'm just going to kind of pull that color all the way through just to kind of soften that stamped look. There we go. And then you can kind of add a, add a bit of flicking motions just with that darker shade, just to give that impression like you're doing a bit of watercoloring. I'm just adding that darker shade to the center, just intensifying that color a little bit. And then blending it out to the edges. And you will still see the detailed stamped images underneath. They will just be softened a bit. So I might pop in a bit of that lighter color too. Hi, Christine. So let's go on to the second flower here below. Oh, I might just blend this out a bit more. So strange, I think. I, I wonder if my brush still has a little bit of blue in there because there's a bit of blue coming through. No, oh, it's definitely the ink. I think these, these crisp inks have kind of a blue note in it. So if you kind of start watercoloring with them, you will get that kind of blue color.
pop out. So let's just start adding that darker shade in the middle. Once again, let's just start by adding the water. So let's just kind of intensify that color in the center. This is why I did try to stay away from the darkest shade. Oh, don't worry, Xiomara. You haven't missed a lot. I'm using the Blooming Tulip stamp set, and I'm kind of doing some loose watercoloring, but based on the second image, so the second layer in our stamped image. There we go. And as I expected a little bit, when water coloring with these colors, the color does break up and you get some kind of ready tones and bluey tones in there, but it's really a cool effect. So it's quite fun. There we go. So there I've got my, you can see how those colors kind of changed when I added the watercolor, but it is pretty fun. What you can do now, if you want to just add a bit of a shimmer and a shine, is you can go and take your metallic watercolors. Thank you for sharing. So here you've got the metallic watercolors, and you can add a little bit of a shimmer and a shine to it. I think I'm going to just use the sterling silver, because that's the kind of the more, a very neutral color. And a great thing to do is don't be afraid to really add water and activate the color because these are very pigmented and they are watercolors but they are a lot thicker than usual watercolors so there we go so i don't need a lot i just want to add kind of a couple of like little like streaks just like just like a little bit kind of following so just going to add a couple of those I can see those like kind of stamped pieces come out. I just want a little bit of shimmer and shine on there, not too much. There we go. And I don't know if you can see it on screen, but kind of shimmers and shines a little bit. There we go. So those are my flowers. Now onto the leaves, which are over here. So it is really, I, can, I don't know if you can see, but where I've activated the color, it becomes kind of blue-greeny. It's very, very odd, but it does create this really fun look on a card. So let's activate these colors. I think I'm just going to activate the color which is on there. I want to keep it really, really soft. So I'm just going to use the water and just kind of blend over that leaf just to kind of soften that color. There we go. I might just add a bit of that lighter shade as well, just to kind of. There we go. So I'm going to leave those to dry for a little bit. Let's just hope they dry quickly. <laughs> While these are drying, I might just pop them on top of my. That one dropped on the floor. I'm just going to pop them on near to the lighting. It might make them dry a little bit faster. Yes, they don't last for long tulips. There is a trick where you have to kind of prick a pin through the stem at the bottom or something. I kind of like seeing them in, in nature. So I was thinking, because we've got these gray flowers and gray leaves, very neutral, but because we mixed the colors of the crisp ink and these colors kind of do change a little bit and we've got little, like, little elements of, there's like a little bit of green popping through and a little bit of this kind of red, like purpley red popping through. I thought it'd be nice just to have a darker background. So I took out a Love for Stripes set D, our six by six paper pack. 
I love these this these paper packs with all the different colors and the different stripes. And I thought it'd be nice to use one of these as a backdrop for our flowers. So what I'm going to do is I am quickly going to clean my palette. Let's just give this a little spritz and a little clean. That way it's ready for our next card. There we go. And on our next card, we're going to be using, using lovely spring colors. There we go. So here I've got all the different papers. And I'm just going to pop, get my cards. They are nearly dry. So the lighting does tricks. <laughs> it's, it's, it heats the cards as well. There we go. So I'm going to just hold this against the different backgrounds and just see which one works best. So this is like a dark navy color. Oh, Maria, you'll love them. Okay, and then we've got like the fuller image here. So you, here you've got like, let me just, it's the same. So here you've got like a dark stripe with more white. And then here we've got more blue. I preferred the other one. This is a lighter color, which is a bit too light for me. So I'm just going to work my way through. This one is really light. So that's one that's going to pop. This, is, this one is a kind of a, a greeny brown. There we go. Oh, good, Joni. <laughs> and here we've got that kind of green color. And it's just funny how your the look of your flower changes with the background. So this is a bit too... So here we've got a lighter shade. No, that's too light as well. I might, I'll probably go with a red. I had that in mind. But that's a bit too red. Oh, but it does look good. I do like that one. And that's too pink. So I think I'm going to take a one red. And the one I really, really liked as well was this one. I don't know why. I just, maybe the darker blue. Oh, we'll just go with that one. I really like those two kind of backdrops for my card. There we go. So we'll just see how that looks. So let's just pop these all back together. So I usually keep my little paper packs with one of these little clips over here. So these larger kind of paper clips, they hold them really well. They hold them together really, really well. And they're easy to store because I can pop them into my little box and they stand up like this. So there we go. So now that our elements are dry, they're nice and dry, I'm going to cut them out with the coordinating die set. So that's another thing which I really, really, really like is that we have coordinating die sets and this makes, this means we don't have to do any fussy cutting. So let's just pop this out like so. Okay, and I'm going to use my larger die cutting tool just because the pieces are a little bit larger. There we go. I can't fit this onto the whole screen. I'm so sorry, but you will get. You will see part of the process. So as you can see, these are still brand new. I haven't used these the dies yet. I did use the stamp, but not the dies. So in the die set, you get the stem, you get the, the flower, and you also get the leaf. So we're going to be using the flower. Hi, Teresa. And the leaf. So we're going to be using those two from the Blooming Tulips stamp set. So let's get this all ready, set up to cut. So I'm going to cut out the two tulips which I stamped and then hand painted. And they're drying and I like the shimmer which is on there. So I'm just going to take, pop my die on there. I don't know if you can see it. So usually I will place the die onto the flower and then I'm going to take a little bit of tape I have come prepared. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of this tape. So I usually use painter's tape and the non-sticky one, like one which doesn't stick too much. So it doesn't rip the paper. So I'm just going to st stick this down so that the dies don't move. And then I can just roll this through the machine. Like so. Oops. <laughs> There we go. So that 
the first flower done. So this is been has been watercolored, and sometimes the paper is a little bit fragile. So do be very careful when you pull it off. So there we have our first flower. There we go. And let's go with our second one. Like so. So I try to pop the tape down over the edges, but not too much on the image itself. So I do not want to pull off any color with my tape. This is really good tape. It costs near to nothing. It's very cheap. It doesn't, it's not too sticky. And I love using it on my crafting projects. Thank you for sharing, Pauline. So if you've just joined, I'm using the Blooming Tulips stem set, which you can see where did I put it. There we go. Here you can see it, the Blooming Tulip stem set. Really, really, really pretty set. There we go. Second flower. And now let's cut out the coordinating leaves. So I will need this a little bit later on, so I'm just going to leave that here paper in the bin and let's cut out our leaves so once again I'm just going to layer this on top and add a bit of tape there we go let's just use the tape from our floral image so this is the only repetitive part is just cutting out two elements of the flower and three elements of the leaves Oh, I'm so happy to, Pauline. Better late than never. There we go. And you can always re-watch the beginning afterwards. So there we've already got one little leaf cut out. And let's just quickly do the two others. Like so. through so here we've got our second leaf from the blooming tulip stem set and it's a really large leaf as well so i'm always drawn towards the larger flowers so with smaller ones you have to make a lot more oh we had our uh, we had our, like we had a bank holiday last week uh, in Belgium. It's very strange. A lot of our holidays are still like our public holidays are still based on a Christian kind of important moments. So, there we go. so we had like a day off last week. But I'm here. I went. I I, I went to work today. I taught my kids, my, my students about the present perfect. <laughs> Which for French speaking students is not that, if, it's, not, it's not easy. So there we go. So we've got all our different elements and now we can start building our card. So once again, I'm just going to test them against our backdrops. And I must say, I really like the blue. And I also like the red. The look is very different. But I think, I don't know, what do you prefer, the blue or the red? Let's just kind of put one here and one here and just see how that looks. The, 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 they do look different with the big different backdrop. So I don't know. I, I do like the red. This is not normally a look I would go for. I do really like this one, but I also like this one, which is a bit more classic. Blue, red. We've got two blues, a red. Yeah, you haven't seen this set yet. Present perfect. My kids, <laughs> the students would love that. So let's go blue, red, blue, red. Oh, this is my, my painter's tape. It's one I buy in Belgium. 
it's because I live in Belgium. And it's like the cheapest shop ever. It's like a dollar store. And this costs like 60 cents, euro cent. There we go. So we've got blue, blue, blue. Okay, let's go with blue. There we go. Let's go with blue. So I'm just going to cut this down to an A2 card size. So, so this is the tape I use, but it's called Verlo Fix. I don't know. It's just like it's the store is called Action, and you can get like lots of brand names, but like at sometimes they are they are in different languages, so you would get them like in in Dutch or in, and so the prices are a bit cheaper. So there we go. So I'm just cutting this down to an A2 size card. And then I can start arranging my little flowers on here. I don't like the stems on there. I'm going to cut them off. Uh, where are my scissors? I have got like the largest scissors in the world, and I, I always manage. Oh, they're here. They're hanging up here. Forgive me. I put them in the correct spot. Now just hanging up there. Yeah, it would just be painters tap tape, low tack, not too tacky. We do have different kind of painters tape over here. They are different in width. They're different in tackiness. I don't know if it's, yeah, something like low tack. So I've just taken those off. So I'm going to try and place these. They're larger flowers, so it's a bit more difficult to place. I'm having a hard time with, oh, that, that looks good. Okay, I'm not gonna, let's just stop, stop. Let's stick this down and then we can add a little sentiment. So I'm going to be using some tape here. Ours, the colors differ from brands, so some, yeah. We've got this, there's one very, really well-known brand, which is called Tisa, something like that. And that one has like, the pink one I like, which is a, it's a lot wider. I like using that for mixed media. But it's pricey as well. Frog tape. Don't know that one, Sue. But probably depending from country to country, the names will differ a bit, so. So let's just pop these down like so. There we go. I think like Tisa is one. I don't know. Do you say Tisa or Tessa or? <laughs> I don't think it's Tessa. There we go. Let's just pop the leaf over there. I should have probably done the leaves in a kind of another color just to stand, make them stand out a bit more. Oops, don't stick, don't stick. Well, I'm just gonna cut part of the leaf off. I need it to pop under here a little bit more. So I'm using the Alter New double-sided foam tape. Now I'm not happy with that. There we go. Okay, that, let's just do that. Now I need a little bit of white cardstock so that I can stamp my sentiments. So this stamp set only has, it has a large word here saying just, 
And then we've got just imagine, just because, just believe. Let's go with just and because. So once again, I'm just going to use my acrylic block. And where did I put my, my favorite obsidian black ink? Oh, there it is. So I'm just going to stamp with some black ink. I do want it to stand. I do want to stand. Sorry, I do want it to stand out a bit. And at the same time, I've just inked up my fingers. There we go. So when I do like a combined sentiment stamp, I do like to stamp them separately because sometimes it's really hard to place them both onto. Um, your paper at the same time and stamp them at the same time. So I'm just going to start with the word just. And those of you who have, who have followed a couple of my lives or even some of my classes, you will know I love a combined font. So a more scripted font with a typed font. So I said just, just believe. Yeah, that's good. Just believe. And then you can add whatever you want inside your card. So here, I'm just going to pop this down to the right-hand side of the just. There we go. And just press it ever so slightly. So when you're working with really tiny stamps like that, the just believe, don't press too hard on your acrylic block. This might just smudge the, the image and make it a bit less crisp. So I've got that. So I've got my black. So am I going to just cut this out with my scissors or shall I take my, <laughs> let's just take my little trimmer. And it's quite a large sentiment, but I think that's good because I need something to break up all those kind of soft monochrome colors. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to cut out a kind of a little banner. Like, so this, I usually just do like this with my scissors. So I haven't measured anything. Maybe I should. This is how I usually do things. See, I quite like the look of that larger... I might just trim off the edges a little bit just to make it a teeny, teeny, tiny bit strong. A little, little less wide. So on this side, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Oh, that one is really short. Okay, let's make the other one shorter as well. Okay, there we go. My kids make me laugh, Mom! Uh, and then the other one says, No, she's got a live. She's live, she's got Facebook live. So there we go. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just going to pop that on here and I'm going to add my. My little borders, just because that's my thing. So I'm going to add my first border and then my second border, my little doodle edges. There we go. Like so. Okay, let's pop on a bit of foam tape. I know the paper, it's so pretty, and you can just use it 
in so many ways just to add that like extra bit of color or detail like so let's just pop it on there And I think just that just makes everything stand out. And if you wanted to, you could add a couple of maybe some gray enamel dots. And well, doodling, it's just drawing lines around the edges. It's not even doodling. There we go. So that's our first card. Let's move on to our second card. And before we do that, let's just clean up a little bit here. So I didn't use my third leaf because they are really large, so it's a bit hard to use all of them. So let's just give this a bit of a clean. Put this in my little bin. Go. So I try to keep my desk as clean as possible. It's not very easy, and let's go. So let's go, let's start with our second card. So once again, I've got some white watercolor paper. And this time, I am going to use the outline stamp, which you can see here. And it's not like an outline stamp where everything is neat and you've got a perfect outline. It's more of a detailed outline stamp than anything else. So let's go ahead and stamp this with my larger block because this one is a bit too small. Where did I put? Oh, there it is. So funny how you can you lose these large blocks. <laughs> these acrylic blocks, they're see-through, so they kind of camouflage themselves. So let's just ink this up. We're going to go a whole different route now. We're going to create a really colorful card. So I think I'm just going to create my card directly onto this. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to cut anything out. So once again, I'm going to use my obsidian black ink. And I use this when I'm watercoloring because it doesn't fade. We just have to heat set it a little bit before starting the coloring. So let's just start with our floral image. Like so. Um, yeah, let's just do this. And I'm just going to stamp these here at the bottom, like this. So one over here. And then another one, like so. Let's just kind of. Yeah, that's, that looks OK. Like this. There we go. Okay, and let's just turn it around and I'm going to do the same thing at the top. We're going to create kind of a border. Let's go in there like so. I don't know why I'm cleaning it because I'm just need, I'm going to have to stamp it two times. There we go. And let's do the, the next one like so. So nothing too complicated. There we go. And now it's time to add color. But before that, I'm just going to quickly heat set this to make sure that the ink is nice and dry before we add any water. So that's always a good tip. If you're watercoloring and you're doing the kind of black stamping, let it dry at least half an hour or heat set it. Okay, that should do it. I'm just going to take a quick sip of tea. It's kind of my night routine. So we created a very kind of monochromatic, very subtle card with a little bit of shimmer and shine. You can see how shiny that is. Now I want to create something a little bit more colorful. There we go. 
So let's just use our little pan over here. Mine is nice and used, well loved. So once again, so that I can mix my colors a little bit, I'm just going to use my palette over here. Okay. And I've got my watercolor brush here. So let's just do this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to activate some colors. I usually go towards the same. So I want to make something nice and springy. So with like reds and maybe some pinks and maybe even some purples. Let's go with that. Yep. Okay. Let's do that. So I'm going to use Cherry Blossom. You know, and before I use that, I'm just going to clean up this a little bit. Whoop. Oh, there we go. There we go. That should do. Whoop. Whoop. So this is my color. So let's go with that cherry blossom, which is a lovely, lovely pink color, which you can see over here. There we go. So there we go. I've got that color. I've already got a bit of purple there, so I might just add a bit more purple. You can reactivate the color on there, so don't be afraid to do that. If you've got mixed up a nice color and it's dried, you can just add water. So nice purple. There we go. And oh, I might add a little bit of yellow. Summer afternoon. Pocket full of sunshine. Let's go with pocket full of sunshine. I haven't used that one yet. So I have to pull off the paper. So when you get your um, artist watercolors, there is this kind of paper on there. So it just protects the watercolor. So I'm just going to pull this off. Oh, that didn't go all too well. Come on. There we go. So here you can see that nice yellow color. You have got the names on the sides of these, which is really, really practical. Pop them in the inside here so that you can see them easily. So, okay, let's just get that yellow color activated. I'm just going to pop it over here. So this is the hardest part. Okay, let's start coloring. So I might start with my yellow. There we go. So I'm just going to add water to my brush, and then I'm going to add that to the center of my flower here, like so. I've already got a bit of yellow on my brush, so I'm just going to add. I'm just going to do this really quickly. Nothing complicated. I might just darken the shade and go with summer afternoon a little bit, just to kind of, yeah, that's a nice shade. There we go. So I'm going to do all my flowers like this. They'll all be a little bit different. So I'm doing this really roughly, just adding that color. This is summer afternoon, which is a really pretty color. Let's just go with this one as well. Okay. And a bit more. I'm just going like this. Doop, doop, doop. So nothing too complicated, we're just adding color. And you can add a bit on the outer edges if you wanted to as well. So Okay, let's go in with our pink now. Hi, Liling. Thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing. So now I'm going to add a bit of that pink. There we go. I'll just pop a bit of pink over here. here as well so I'm not overthinking this I'm just adding color and I'm not even wetting my paper before you can if you wanted to like so Oops, that's dark and the great thing is that depending on where you add the color some spots will be darker others will be lighter Okay, that's nice and dark. Let's add a bit more over here. 
then you can kind of blend it out. And if there's too much water, just pick it up with your brush, kind of dry the brush a little bit off. Okay. I really love pinks and yellows, kind of the colors of spring. Oh, you will, Aling. We're using the, the Blooming Tulips stamp set. And I will do a little recap of what we've done afterwards. Just adding a bit more color in here. And when it mixes with the yellow, it will create like a fun orange. And if you wanted to, you can, you can blend this a little bit so that the, the, the lines aren't too harsh. Just blend that ever so subtly. But I do like that look when it kind of mixes and you have like the different colors. There we go. I am going to go back in with a little bit of that yellow just because I want to kind of blend the colors out a bit. But still keep that yellow nice and bright in the middle. There we go. Like so. Uh, there's the printer again. It's a good sign. Boys are doing their homework. And now let's go back in with that little bit of that purple. I've got the purple over here. I'm just going to add the purple to the spots where I haven't added my color yet. Just be very careful where you've got your yellow. Because purple and yellow aren't the best of friends. So we're not going to try not to mix those too much. There we go. Oh, that's dark. Let's get in a bit of water there. So you could do this with a finer brush. I'm using number two. Whoops. So if it's too dark, just add a bit of water. The pink and the purple will work wonderfully together. So, like so. Just add a bit of that color. I am doing this really roughly. This kind of loose watercolor look, you can't do this. It has to be kind of, just go with it. There we've got our flowers. There. And I love those colors. Oh, they make me so happy. So I'm just going to pop this on top, leave this to dry. I can always use those colors again afterwards. And just look how pretty that is. It's so, so pretty. It's nice and makes me happy, lovely colors. So once again, we're going to use our little stamp. Oh, we didn't use this anyway, so didn't need the palettes. Just went straight into the pan. Once again, let's just get out our stamping block. Put our just on there. Obsidian black ink. We do want something pretty dark to make it stand out. Yes, Nancy, you can do this. This is super easy to do. Just. There we go. And that's just going to pop out now because it's black against the white background and you've got those lovely colors around it. And this is such a fun technique to do with any kind of flower. You just create this fun background and you have your sentiments sticking in the middle. And this is super easy because you don't, it's not, it's not like where do I put the shadow and, and, and how do I place this color and the lighter and the darker shades. Let's just put just because. You don't need a special reason to give someone a nice and bright and happy card. Just because. Oops. Oh dear. I didn't stamp it. Okay, can can I do this? Can I restamp this stamp? Who? <laughs> I I can. There we go. So that is really fun and colorful. And you can do this for any kind of season, 
if you wanted to go with even lighter colors or more pastel colors or you want to go with more kind of autumny colors this would work really well with some autumn leaves for example this kind of design it's a very simple easy design to recreate recreate i can't speak anymore there we go so that was our second card today and i did have another idea but i don't know if we have time no it's a bit too short but i if you wanted to you could stamp onto some different kind of paper you could go with black or navy but i love craft so if you've got like a craft paper and then you use your metallic watercolors to do the same technique uh, the metallics will sit beautifully on this and give a really really cool effect so that's just another way of you using um your set oh and i'm not using the correct packaging there we go so that's another great way of using this stamp set is using that on black cardstock and then you add your watercolor pet your watercolors the metallic watercolors because they are really really um pigmented and they sit really well on colored cardstock and you get a really cool effect on craft paper as well so let me just put those two cards next to each other and you can see how different they are oh Liling, this was just i think pure chance and i didn't stamp it straight so there we go that's that's just live okay <laughs> I should have used my misty tool but there you go so those are the two cards for today so one which is very muted very kind of um with gray tones on that kind of blue i did choose the blue because when we colored with the um crisp inks the gentleman's gray these kind of break down a little bit when you add water and they you, you get these kind of blue greeny ready tints and i thought that worked really well against that color and a lot of you told me to use the blues so you've got a kind of really neutral card and then this really colorful card, which is super, 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 super easy to do. There we go. So let me just switch back to my face. There we go. <laughs> That's me back again with all the lighting on me. Ooh. Oh, I'll just pop my lights back up. Ooh. There we go. Oh, no, I'm crooked. Is that better? Yeah, great. So here are the two cards. So here is the first one with those nice bright colors. And then here we've got our second card, which is a little bit shiny. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the screen, but those are the two cards we created with the Blooming Tulips die set. And if you've got any other ideas on how to use the set, or if you use it maybe in a different way, don't hesitate to pop it onto social media because and just hashtag us in it. And we would love to see what you create. Thank you very much, Liling. Oh, we, yes, do watch the replay and then you can see how I created it. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you so much for joining Mimi and for sharing. That was great. Thank you, Sue. And a huge shout out to our alt new badge who's been popping in all the links. So if you do use this set, don't forget to tag us. And I wish you a lovely day wherever you are or evening or morning if you're down under. And I will see you on Thursday. So keep your eyes peeled. Thursday, I've got something really fun to share with you. So have a lovely day, everyone. Bye-bye.